Bruce's landing legs are deployed. SpaceX not only lands those rockets on dry land, but they can also land on a floating drone ship. So how does SpaceX land rockets with such precision? Let's find out. SpaceX is a private company that was always trying to find new technologies to reduce the cost of launch. For a two-stage rocket, reusing only the first stage will largely reduce the launch cost by fractions. Uh, so. So obviously, if we can re reuse the rocket, um, say a, a thousand times, then, then that, that would make the capital cost of the rocket per launch only about fifty thousand dollars. You know, there'd be maintenance and other things that would factor in there, and fixed costs and some overhead allocation. And so SpaceX started looking for technologies that can return these first stages or boosters safely back to the launch site. Initially, SpaceX tried using parachutes to land boosters, but it was not successful. Later on, in 2011, SpaceX announced the SpaceX Reusable Launch System development program to come up with new technologies for reusing full launch systems. You can imagine that if, if planes were not reusable, uh, very few people would fly. And soon, they started focusing on developing a power design system for landing boosters. Power design was a challenge at first. They faced many failures and eventually, after many tests and improvements, their first successful landing of booster happened in December 2015. And the rest is history. Currently, landing and reusing boosters have become a routine for SpaceX. Anyways, let's see these rockets closely and see what technologies are helping them in landing. We will see examples from Falcon family rockets. Reignitable engine with vector thrust control. The Falcon rocket lifts off from the launch site using its nine powerful engines. Then gradually, full main engine cutoff happens after traveling about 70 to 80 kilometers above Earth's atmosphere. And soon after this, the first and second stages of the rocket get separated. Falcons are powered by Merlins, which are powerful reignitable engines that are armed with vector thrust control. This means they can be restarted and throttled many times during the course of the journey when required and at the same time their hydraulic levers help in controlling the direction of engine thrust, which in turn controls the whole rocket system within and outside Earth's atmosphere. After stage separation, these engines do three different reignitions or burns. The first burn with three engines happens after stage separation called boost back burn to reverse its course. But this is not required in the case of a drone ship landing at sea, as after separation, it continues the path without changing direction. The second burn happens during re-entry to Earth's atmosphere, which will slow down the rocket. Slowing down is important as it will protect the booster from extra heat produced against the Earth's dense atmosphere. And finally, a last-minute engine burn is done to reduce the velocity of the booster almost to a hovering stage so it can land safely. Nine Merlin engines of the booster are arranged in an octave web configuration, which is a circular or octagon shaped pattern with one central engine surrounded by eight others. According to SpaceX, this pattern ensures better stability for the rocket as it reduces the length and weight of the Falcon thrust structure and at the same time it simplifies the manufacturing of the booster. Deployable landing legs And of course, few seconds before booster landing, you see those landing legs popping out. Falcon family rockets have four deployable landing legs at the base of the rocket. These legs are a combination of carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. During liftoff, you will find them sticking onto the sides of the booster and they only extend outward at the time of landing. Approximately 80 meters wide and weighing less than 2100 kilograms, it uses high pressure helium as a working fluid. Other than these basic technologies, a few other parts and techniques that make sure of a smooth landing are these. Cold gas thrusters. You would have noticed this, some kind of white smokes push from the sides of the booster at high pressure. 
These are compressed nitrogen gas thrusters that are located at the top of the booster and there are two packs of four little thrusters on each side. Cold gas thrusters mainly help the booster to flip around before re-entry and is responsible for adjusting the overall orientation of the rocket. We can see them constantly firing during the descending stage to make sure the booster stays upright. Next is hypersonic grid fins. A total of four deployable grid fins are positioned at the bottom of the interstage. For your information, interstage is a part that connects the first stage and the second stage of a rocket which houses the air fill pushers that separates the first and second stage. Grid fins are made from forged titanium and are left unpainted on the rocket. According to Elon Musk, fins are not painted as they glow red hot during a fast re-entry. Arranged in X configuration, the grid fins control and position the rocket during re-entry by moving the center of pressure. So in a way, these grid fins control the descent of the rocket into the Earth's lower atmosphere by cutting through the airstream. Autonomous Spaceport Drone Ship For missions that do not carry enough fuel to return to the launch site, SpaceX make use of Autonomous Spaceport Drone Ship to recover the boosters at sea. This landing platform is as big as a football field and is controlled by an autonomous robot. GPS technology and its four diesel power thrusters make it possible for an accurate positioning to be within 3 meters even under storm conditions. The ship makes use of a lot of sensors, GoPro cameras and other measurement technology to gather real-time data. Falcon rockets that are usually launched from sites near the ocean which goes to the geostationary orbit can make use of this facility. Onboard Computer The landing sequence of these rockets is entirely automated and a lot of external factors can affect a smooth landing. For example, sudden changes in the surrounding environment such as air pressure can ruin the flight path. So the rocket will need to make use of real-time data and process them fast to make sure the accuracy of landing is achieved. Falcon's onboard computer does this during a flight in a matter of seconds. They are equipped with Inertial Navigation System or INS which has a lot of sensors including motion and rotational sensors that can give information on its orientation, position, velocity and altitude. Similar to a self-driving car, these rockets constantly collect data around them, check them against the program flight path and position themselves in the right direction. Reusing the boosters are just half of the job. According to SpaceX reusability program, they want to build a fully reusable space vehicle where they can reuse all stages. And such a spacecraft is already in the development, called the Starship. I will discuss how SpaceX Starship lands and how it will become a fully reusable space system in my upcoming videos. Hope you enjoy watching this video, so don't forget to subscribe and leave your comment below. See you soon.